to sin that we may live again, precious Lamb of God. Augustus, outstanding. But you got to do me one favor, Augustus. What? You got to do me one more verse of that. Because I don't know if everybody heard you. I want y'all to listen. The land, Take it in. The precious Lamb of God. Feel it? Born in a sin that we may live again. The precious Lamb of God. Now let's give Augustus and Bill Myers a hand. I guess I just had to let people hear that. The precious Lamb of God. This is a special day. It's a Resurrection Sunday. Yes. So we're excited to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. So welcome to Detroit Unity Temple where the opportunities and challenges of living meet the awesome, the dynamic power of God. For on this day, we take into consideration all that has been done for us. And if you believe that, raise your hand. Yes. Allow people to know that you understand the sacrifice that was provided for us to be able to be in this wonderful place, this wonderful day. So we say thank you for joining us and being a part of this moment. Thank you for those who are joining us via the internet, and we welcome you into our spiritual home because this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. We'll start this moment with the reading of today's daily word. So I invite up our very own Reverend David Stubbs. Good morning, Detroit Unity. Good morning. Today's word is arise. And our affirmation says, I rise to accept new life and renewal. Jesus rove above all limitations, transcending darkness to light and death to new life. His overwhelming death is the ultimate inspiration and example for humankind, a precious gift of hope and renewal. This Easter, I am grateful, ex gratefully accept my renewal as I awaken to the call of the divine. I turn to the Christ presence within me and discover new life and energy, lifting me into higher awareness and understanding of spiritual truth. In so doing, I leave behind that which held me in bondage. I rise above limited beliefs, habits, and actions. With unwavering faith, I rise to accept inspiring new possibilities and the fullness of God's glorious life, love, and grace. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1 and 3. As we encourage you every Sunday morning to participate with us in blessing our temple. And we do so in two phases of this blessing, but we bless it through the power of the spoken word. Would you join us together as we affirm our congregational mission statement? Together, our mission and goal is to prayerfully demonstrate the teaching of Jesus Christ through the study and practice of truth principles. Now, our vision statement for the Living Temple. Shall we know this together? We, the spiritual community of Detroit Unity, joyously carry out the vision of renewal and prosperity for ourselves, our spiritual home, and our world. This week's food for thought goes as such. The kingdom of heaven is with you, and whosoever shall know himself shall find it. Here's it again. The kingdom of heaven is with you, and whosoever shall know himself shall find it. If this is your first time joining us at Detroit Unity, we welcome you. We welcome you here in person at our 10 o'clock service. We also welcome you as you can join in at 12 on our website. And in so doing, we would like for you to remember to sign our guest book as you leave the service, letting us know that you were here and we will appreciate it. And if not, we will make sure that we are available to you at www.youtube.com forward slash Detroit Unity. With this, we're ready for our brother and our both brothers that you will bring on your hymn and we thank you. Amen. <laughs> I ask that you raise your hand in praise. Anointing falls on me. Anointing falls on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing. hands out just one time anointing falls on me anointing falls on me let the power of the holy ghost fall on me anointing Give God a hand right now. Give God a hand right now. Give God a hand right now. Thank you for that nice musical, select, musical selection. Now let us affirm our statement of truth. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God the good omnipotent. Now let us say our prosperity throughout the throughout thought of the week. Every day is a renewal. Every morning the daily miracle. This joy you feel is life. Thank you. 
Now let us prepare for our morning meditation by reflecting on the goodness of God and by singing the Lord's Prayer. invite you to close your outer eyes and take a deep breath and step into the presence of God. Take another breath and exhale and take it one more breath and exhale. This Easter, we celebrate the rising from the tomb. We have experienced a letting go of all error thinking, and we let go and we let God. So today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, the I am presence in each of us. It is the awakening and the rising of our spiritual consciousness. This energy of resurrection is lifting all people to a new dimension of love. This is a time we are renewed, revitalized, restored in the Christ consciousness. For Jesus was under spiritual law, and we too are under that same law. He is a demonstration of our pure being that is in each of us. So we rise to the regenerating truth of Jesus Christ. I am that I am. Let us center our thoughts on those words. I am 
that I am. So we leave the world of materiality behind and we step into the world of individuality. He said, I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and your God. So we move forward following his path to do as he did for he is the way. So as we close, let us go forward knowing that we too have risen today and everything is holy today. Everything is holy today. So take another breath and release. And when you're ready, open your outer eyes and come back to this place, and so it is. Yeah. 
Augustus Williamson and Bill Myers. Thank you so much, Augustus. Did you enjoy his song? Did you enjoy how he brought it out? How the spirit was moving in him. God so loved the world. Sometimes we don't take time to think about that in our daily life. I don't know if it goes around the world and it talks about how we should be recognizing what God provided us with. But on this Sunday, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. All right. On this Sunday, we're going to examine it. So I want you to put your, your heart open, allow the words that may come forward. So allow me to be centered right now because God has been working with me through the night. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, show me thy ways, O oh Lord, and teach me thy paths. And lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation, on thee do I wait all the day. Lord, allow me to be an instrument today. Allow me to be your vessel. Allow me to be able to bring a message of joy, of love, and sacrifice. So I say thank you, God. I'm going to talk about some things. I'm going to start off that unity is not your ordinary church. I want you to know that this is the moment that unity was built around. The resurrection. So my talk title is The Resurrection, the Appearance, and the Ascension of the Risen Christ. Do I have any metaphysicians in this building? All right. Raise your hand. For those who don't know what metaphysics is, I will tell you some things about it. Some of you may walk into our building and say, where are the crosses? <laughs> we left it at Calgary. Yeah, all right now. You gotta understand that in unity, we have moved beyond just glorifying a death yeah. that doesn't exist. We have went into a place where we acknowledge the risen Christ because that's what has to take place within us. Yeah, yeah. The world is crying out, not just for us, but for the world. When I watched that movie, The Walking Dead, I think about our society because they're stuck in the idea of death and they're living zombies because they haven't embraced the idea of the Christ presence. You see, oh, y'all got me getting started already. But I want to go into something because we have to go back because we had a good, we had a very wonderful Good Friday. We had communion. Mm -hmm. We had a chance to recognize that blessing, but we talked about that journey to Calgary. Yeah. We talked about how the Last Supper took place, and thank you, Reverend Artel, for bringing that forward. We talked about how the Last Supper, he said, he broke bread and said, do this in remembrance of me. Yeah. But he wanted you to remember him not for hanging on a cross, yeah. but the message he brought to this world, the love that he generated. You see, we took it on there, and the Reverend David took us to Calgary. He talked about the, what it was like. And we sort of envisioned what that sacrifice really was on a physical sense. 
because he knew every act that he did, it was already planned out from the last, from the Old Testament. Amen. From the nailing of his hands to a cross of riding into Jerusalem. Some of you may say, what has that to do with me? Right now, we have to ride into Jerusalem, which is a habitation of peace. Many of us have to cross out error thoughts. You have a God gene inside of you if you don't know that. Let me say that again. You have a God cell inside of you that's waiting to be awakened to the divinity of who you are. Eric Butterworth said, discover the power within you. Jesus took us there when he wanted to show you the greatest power that exists. Yes. He was able to come home when we examine his story. They put him in a tomb, clothed the rock, and a whole series of things began to happen. An earthquake occurred and the rock moved away and, and Jesus began that next process of being lifted up. So the three areas that I said I'm going to talk about, the resurrection, all of us may not know it, but the resurrection, let me speak towards it. Jesus was raised from the dead. He overcame death in the body for since he came by man, he was able to do that. But the resurrection means this, the ability to overcome. The word resurrection also suggests that there has been a falling short of the divine standard. Therefore, the necessity of being restored and re reviewed through resurrection, man becomes an inhabitant here and now of a new heaven and a new earth. We are not living up to the Christ standard. If you have any thoughts at times that flip over into jealousy, anger, worry, we're still rising, striving to be that. But we have to overcome it. So what the cross was really about, you things that's blocking you from rising, you put on the cross. You cross it out, like exit out. Sometimes we'll say you cancel it, you golden key it. Who you are is a divine presence of God. Who you are is a living divinity, an embodiment of Jesus. Jesus shows you the way, as he said, how to live a life. It requires us to step up in this day and age when we have the battles of Ukraine, rioting in Haiti, when we have the things going on in the South, division upon division. Somewhere you have to make a choice. That choice, once back 2,000 years ago, they were given that opportunity before. Let me share something with you as I go back in time. When Jesus stood before Pilate, as you brought out, he offered them to make a choice. He said, who do you want to save, Barabbas or Jesus? But let me add something on there. Do you know that Barabbas' first name, do you know what it was? It was Barabbas, whose first name was Jesus. Jesus Barabbas and Jesus of Nazareth. Isn't that coincidental? Right. Sort of like this idea of two individuals. Barabbas was a revolutionary and Jesus was a man of God. Yeah. And what did the people shout? Save Barabbas. Yeah. One represented our materiality, one represented our spirituality. You can look it up. Both were named Jesus. How amazing that we have choices in our life that we have to make. Yes. Put that wine bottle down, <laughs> no longer drink. <laughs> Even put the cigarette down. Sometimes you have to make a choice whether you want to cuss somebody out. <laughs> Thank you, talking in tongues. <laughs> but the choices you make determines your consciousness. And when you're grounded in a spiritual consciousness, you lean in that direction. You make a choice because we have to grow to our fullest height. We're not here to stay on the low level of vibrational energy. We're not here to just be surrounded in the mud and the gulf. We have to be lifted up. Yes. So Jesus went through an entire sacrifice so we may know the difference. But then there's something that has, would you bring me that book right there, Arkell? 
By the way, we have books that talks about this. One is called Your Hope of Glory by Elizabeth Sands Turner. I'm going to take some passages out of there shortly, but I want you to understand that we are all bounded in our physical body to things that hold us back by gravity. Gravity of our thoughts, gravity of things, the way we've been living our life. But then you have to make a choice. Do you want to stay in the condition that you're in or you want to be lifted up? So the idea that Jesus wanted to demonstrate, because so many people are afraid of dying, not knowing it's life into life. Yes. Not knowing there is no death. The physical body go back to where it belongs. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. Who we are is not that physical presence you may see. Each of us are a divine reflection of God. Oh, yes. Do you understand that? Yes. You may look at me and just see the outer realm, regardless of your color, regardless of your shape or size. But who you are inside, that's the choice you have to make. You're going to make a choice. So Jesus says, let me show you the ultimate choice. He said, I'm going to go up on this cross, and I'm going to come down. In three days, this Sunday right here, he made a great demonstration. Yes. Oh, it was so, can you imagine if we were back there? First of all, God bless women. The disciples were nowhere to be found. Yeah. Uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene had to go and check it out. They said, let me go, because there was a process of anointing. They wanted to provide the body with oils and ointments, and they wanted to be able to do that. And she came rushing into the cave, and she looked around. There was no body. Now, prior to that, the Pharisees had told Pilate, make sure you put guards at the door. Oh, they thought, but in that, it was an earthquake, as I stated, then all of a sudden this blazing light hit and an angel was there. The soldiers were trembling, oh please, and they split. They almost found them like they were dead. But that morning, when the two women got there, Mary and Mary, they thought someone took his body away. They saw someone who was standing near them. Guess who that was? It was Jesus. But he told her, don't touch me right now, it was in the process of transfiguration. Yes. The body was so illuminated. It was in that moment that the Christ was shining brightly, and he shared to them, go and tell my disciples about it. Now it was amazing. She saw Peter and John. Peter took off flying. <laughs> John was right behind him. When Peter got to the cave door, though, and didn't go inside. He froze right there. But love of John carried him inside to see it. You see, that was a moment that they had to understand because Jesus wanted to show them something, that he lives. When we say he is risen, this is what this is about. Let's go back inside of ourselves. How many of you ever been so down and out, nobody thought you could get back up? All right. Am I right or wrong? Uh -huh. If you went through that experience, or going through that experience, yeah. oh, it's so deep. How many of us felt people didn't believe in us? Yeah. Didn't think we could make it over? Yes. Remember that song, Augusta, that I can make it over? See, when you, when you have that spirit in you, because Jesus demonstrated for us he had gotten over. He made it over, and he was standing there. During what we call appearances now, during the 40 days following his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his followers on 10 occasions. Jesus had obtained power on three planes of consciousness, the spiritual, the physical, and the material. And after his resurrection, he held his body in that place in the astral plane for 40 days. Now, think about this. How often do we celebrate the resurrection power for 40 days? Y'all know 40 is a significant number. How many times do we talk about what happened? 
So let me go to continue on. His mission was not completed until his followers were convinced of the resurrection. The 11 apostles were to continue the Christ ministry, and they had to be convinced that he still lived. But since his body had been spiritualized, it was not subject to physical limitations. He could suddenly appear to people in rooms where doors were closed and could just as suddenly vanish from their sight. Sometimes we have had family members who made their journey, who ascended, and we will see their presence. Have that ever happened to anyone? Oh, yeah. And you could just feel the energy, or you walked into their room and you could feel their presence. And all of a sudden you wonder, oh no, I, I, that's nothing. But they're there sometimes to communicate to you, to allow you to know something. Let me tell you a true story. My father died when I was about 12. My mother had all of us six kids. My father, I'm not ashamed of it, was a, a construction owner. He had all barber shops, and he was also a number man. <laughs> and back in the 50s and 60s, that was, that was good business. <laughs> Amen. And, and so my mother would write a letter to my father. She would take, when she was having hardship, she would take that letter and place a glass of water over that letter and he would appear to her in a dream, she would tell us, and also would give her a number. <laughs> so you know we ain't good for about a month. <laughs> hey, it used to be in many churches they would do that. Y'all know about that. See, don't talk about those churches no more. <laughs> I'm not either. Don't ask me to give no numbers. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> but there's one part I want to share with you is that the purpose of this. It was his fifth appearance. It was the evening, and the ten of the apostles were already there, other than Thomas. And together in a room, Jerusalem, the door was closed, and suddenly Jesus came and stood amongst them and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And please pay attention to those words. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Do you know what we do in unity, right? This is why we do it in unity. He told them that John the Baptist had baptized you of water unto repentance, but he said of Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So when a new member come into our church, we ask everyone to stand and we said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. See, if you spiritualize, you're sending energy to those individuals, energy that will lift them up and carry them beyond. But that's where it came from. Sometimes people wonder why we do things. We do it so that you may be spiritualized yourself and lifted up to a higher realm of consciousness. Yes. Yes. And sometimes they may use the term Holy Ghost is the same as the Holy Spirit or Spirit of Truth. When we receive a concept of the re relationship we as spiritual beings have to God, the old state of thoughts is easily dissolved and washed away by that of which water, baptism, is symbolic, denial. Then there comes into our minds ideas direct from the fountainhead, and we see everything in a new light. When you come into unity, you start seeing differently. You start recognizing things differently. Yes. You start taking account of your own material thoughts and realize that you have to leave it alone. Cancel, cancel, golden key it, because, see, we're on a journey. Unity, Detroit Unity Temple, is going to be a new spiritual institution in Christ. Yes. We're going to be lifted up. We're going to move forward with a new design. <laughs> really, it's an old design. I want to share with you. Jesus, right now, left us with a lot of work to do. You know, it was funny, after that moment, the 10 apostles went and saw 
Thomas, and he seemed to be good. He said, this, is too, this news is too good to be true. Yeah. Some of us don't believe that Jesus did all this, so we want to hold on to the old ideas. Mm -hmm. So if you know some doubting Thomas, they have to touch it themselves. He said, show me your hands, man. Yeah. Let me see if they still got holes. Let me touch your side. And, and Jesus remarked, he said, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Yes. It's been 2,000 some odd years. And I always say, if you can walk that walk now, and that man, what a sacrifice that that message and that energy is still there. Thomas represented the understanding that is a natural man is dubious until it's convinced by proof. That's what holds some of us back. We don't have the faith. We don't have the faith because we can't see it. So we want to give up. We don't have the patience. But God never leaves us. God never runs from us. God is always there on time. What did you say, on time God? I'd like to share with you this seventh appearance. On the day of the seventh appearance, it was 10 appearances, by the way. That's why I love if you want to study, grab the books we have in there for you to learn. But the day of the seventh appearance of Jesus is not known. It took place early one morning at the Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, where seven of the apostles had been fishing all night. Just as day was breaking, Jesus appeared on the shore from a distance. And those in the boat did not recognize him, and he simply told them that they had caught any fish. And when they replied in the negative, uh-oh, a lot of times some of us, somebody asked, how you doing? Oh, man, it's been a bad day. <laughs> and said, oh, I ain't got no money. Don't, those people, oh, it was like, whoa, please, don't send that to me, because they come from that point of negativity. But Jesus told them, to cast the net on the right side of the boat. Yeah. And you will find some. Sometimes we have to put it in the right mindset. So they cast it, now they were not, they had so many fish they couldn't even haul them in. See, when those good ideas come to you, mm -hmm. or you sit back and say, my mind was telling me to do that. Yeah. I knew I should have played that number. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all leave that alone. <laughs> Just leave it alone. <laughs> okay. You know, man's mind is a net that catches thoughts, which are based on external conditions. We say in unity, thoughts held in mind do what? Say it again. So you're going to be a product of your thoughts. Yes. If you got millionaire thoughts, you're going to have millionaire ideas. If you got only a dollar thought, you're just going to have dollar presentation demonstration. We got to get out the habit of looking at the lack and start embracing that which is ours to do. But let me tell you this, it comes with work. Yes. No one is going to give you anything that you're not going to work for. Yes. We have to be a body of people that's willing to work for what we want. We can dream it, but if you don't work for that dream, it's just going to stay in the cloud. Amen. And you have to be ready to achieve it. We have to go out and believe it and do it and see it coming. We, this is what Detroit Unity has been in the past when we were close to a thousand strong. This is what Detroit Unity used to have. Truth believers who believed in the truth. Amen. Amen. There's individuals in this very room right now who have that type of conscious awareness, who are not afraid to think big, not afraid to examine or expand their thoughts. Man mind is, but once the Christ mind, man's mind is that plain for us to understand. But once the Christ mind is perceived and obeyed, the net is cast on the right side and success follows. The right side is the side on which man realizes the truth that inexhaustible resources are always present and can be made manifest by those who exercise their faith in that direction. The bread and fish that Jesus provided on that day to the disciples represent the supply of spirit for the needs of the body. Not only does the Father provide for man in the natural world as he 
does with the fish he's provided them. But in the invisible world, substance of elements that correspond to the material. I gotta tell you, at that moment, Jesus had all the disciples back on shore and he shared something. He asked Peter a question. He said, Peter, do you love me more than these? And Peter replied, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. He asked that question three times of Peter, just as when Peter denied him three times, he had a chance to rebuild him up. Jesus commanded Peter to serve humanity, humankind. Peter had denied the Lord thrice, and Jesus gave him his opportunity to overcome his facilitating weakened faith by affirming his devotion to him. True faith has its roots in love for Christ and a willingness to serve him. Still addressing Peter, Jesus says, when you were young, you girdled yourself and walked where you would. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will girdle you and carry you where you do not wish to go. That's a deep thought, isn't it? <laughs> but I have to share with you, right now, we have a chance to be lifted up in our thoughts. This Resurrection Sunday should be a point where you draw a line in the sand. We've already came from uh, White Stone Sunday. We've already came through Advent. We've already came to the point where for Prosperity Sunday. At some point, you gotta put a line in the sand and say, this is what I'm going to do. Because if you don't, you'll be waiting to see those things crumble apart. We have to realize that every day, every moment, is that moment that we begin to be lifted up. I'm telling you something. Jesus, while he was on this plane, gave the Great Commission. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed to them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, there, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the ages. Jesus wanted a body of Christ Individuals who are ready to walk that walk, to stand forth. So spiritual communities were to arise to become that living plane of demonstration. Yes. Some of us, even here, we have fallen off the track. We have to get back on it. That's why we come here, that's why we have this moment, that's why we have this opportunity. You see, you can't be afraid right now. You cannot be afraid right now. Too much is going on. If you're afraid, we're going to lose things. If you're afraid, we won't have what we even got. Where there's fear, there's always going to be a breakup and things are going to fall away from you, run from you. But when there's faith and love, you will attract the things you want. You have to have it inside of you, demanding and claiming it and walking in that faith. Where two or more are gathered there in the midst I am. This body of people right here, we can change this whole neighborhood right here, right now, because we will be gathered together in that oneness of Christ. Yes. See, but if you got an old little God, yes. you're not a basketball player, shoot a three, and they run down, they throw that hand down low, talking about you're not big enough. <laughs> Your God is too big. Yes. That God within you is awesome. You know, I just want you to remember that on this Resurrection Sunday, the ascension was the part most needed because that's when Jesus had completed the 40 days and he stood there in the midst of them and they saw him ascend into that heavenly consciousness. Inside of us is that same place. When you are ready to move into that embodiment of Christ, the spirit of the Christ, will rise up and ascend and be a part of you, all of you, not just one part. When you breathe in that thought, when you take it in, it's not about worshiping a man on a cross, it's about putting in that divine presence within you to do the work that God has called you to do. You see, God selected each of us and gave us a mission. If you run from it, you have to repeat it, just like you flunk a class. I'm serious. 
Some of us have been here several classes, several lifetimes, but until we are ready to step up as men and women of Christ, until we're ready to build what God has given us, God gave us this spiritual community. What are we going to do with it? Don't just look at me or Reverend David or Reverend Art Artell. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to apply? Do you study? Do you try to enhance yourself? These are questions. Are we going to be doubting Thomas? No one will do it for you. You have to do it. So my brothers and sisters, as that commandment went on, we have to step up now. We have to realize that it's up to us. There's no rescue coming. Don't look for the cavalry. Don't even look for anything outside of yourself because God is in you. So your hope of glory is the presence and knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ. God bless you. take a deep breath. I hope those who are watching online understand the same thing we're picking up here. I just wish you could feel the energy in here. Sometimes just watching online don't give you that energy. You need to be here sometimes just to feel it, to make it real. So now let us prepare to bless and be blessed through our tithes and offerings. So let us affirm our prosperity prayer. Divine love in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Please know that your tithes and donations can be made through Givelify, App, PayPal, any way you want to. Mail it in, bring it in, we'll take it all. And right now we're going to have another wonderful song selection by our very own Augustus Williamson. How to reach the masses, men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. Said if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up. Y'all know this, come on. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. Said if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw men unto me. So now that y'all know it, come on and sing it with me. Lift him up, lift him up, still, still he speaks from eternity, said if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw in unto Augustus Williams and Bill Myers. Let us bless the offering. Dear Holy Spirit, oh gracious God, we take this time just to say thank you. We give thanks to all the good that God is. And for this offering, we bless it knowing that you allowed your son, that divine energy, to come here and bless us so that we may all be lifted up. The greatest abundance in an is in our knowing that the Father and I are one. The greatest abundance is in knowing that we can go and do this together and you have shown us and demonstrated it for us through your son, Jesus the Christ. So we bless it knowing that in this very moment we are being lifted up by you and we say thank you God, thank you God, thank you God, and so it is, amen. I'd like to share with you, we have some young men who's going to do the announcements. 
It's nice when you see the youth taking on leadership roles. So I'd like to bring out Jonathan and Elijah as they will bring you our announcements for today. Let's give them a hand. Good morning, everybody. Reverend Gregory Geist's class, The Art of Spiritual Healing, is on pause and res will resume Tuesday, April 2nd. The class is held on Tuesdays from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. via Zoom or in person in the lobby. Contact the Temple Office at 313-345-4848 or email dutreception at gmail.com to sign up for the link. Join the prayer chaplains in the Fred Robinson family room after today's Sunday service. Spend a little extra time in prayer and feel the presence and power of God. Join the Monday night prayer circle, focusing on keeping a true Lent every, morning, every Monday evening at 6 p.m. on Zoom. <coughs> One of our beloved members, Deborah Bowens, has made her transition. Deborah Bowens made her transition on Monday, March 25th. A memorial service will be held Friday, April 5th, 2024, here at Detroit Indy Temple. Family hour will be at 11.30 a.m. With, with the memorial service starting at 12 p.m. A repast will be held following the memorial service in Mayotte Fellowship Hall. Fellowship Sundays are back. We will be having Fellowship Sundays again in Mayotte Fellowship Hall after service starting April 7th. We will have the large meal every first Sunday, which will be $8. On the other Sundays, there will be live refreshments hosted by our lay ministries. Donations are encouraged on these days. Visitors eat free, so invite them to fellowship with us. The heel. The Healthier Black Elders Center will be having a lunch and learn session in Met Fellowship Hall on Wednesday, April 24th from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you would like to attend, please RSVP by Wednesday, April 17th. Call 313-664-2616 and leave a message with your name and names of those coming with you. Your phone number and name of this event. This event is free of charge and lunch will be provided. Sunday, April 7th, 2024, directly after service, Legacy of Literacy, we'll be having another children's book giveaway by Alma Greer in the Margaret Wood Auditorium. The Alma, mm -hmm. they great to talk about it now. The books being given away are Little Damon Learns to Earn and ABC. What an informed voter you will be. Good morning, Detroit Unity. You know, we have to say, we, we, we. The more you read, the better you read. So read, read, read. And I don't just say that. Legacy of Literary, Literacy gives books, these books, for our young people to read. Yes. And as Reverend Geis would, was talking about this morning, we are going to be the ones that make sure that all of our kids are literate. Yes. It's up to us. It's up to us. And if they are not literate, they, it just reduces the chances that they will be successful in life. So that's our responsibility, yes. okay? And so on April the 7th, we will be giving away the books. How many of you watch uh, Shark Tank? Yes. Oh, yeah. Now you know Damon, Damon John is on Shark Tank. Yeah. Well, this is his children's book. Yeah. So you know Damon knows what he's doing. Right. And so this Damon uh, learns to earn is just a cute way of how his mother got him involved in, in uh, earning instead of always asking the parents for resources. 
they can go out and, and earn their own resources. So we have to do that. And, and so make sure that the uh, young people are here next Sunday to uh, pick up their books. And our friend Chess Lon is going to read Little Damon uh, Learns to Earn to the... Uh, yeah. So I want to thank you for all, all of your support. And then this book that uh, Betty Barton brought to my attention called The Universal Human. How many of you are familiar with this? By uh, Gary Zukoff. It is bad. <laughs> it will get inside of your head and make you do what Reverend Geist was talking about. You have to do the work. Like Johnny Coleman says, it works if you work. So let's go forth and do the work. So uh, the um, Connie has a universal human in a bookstore. It's going to be next week. We we'll have it available. It's there now. It's there now if you want to uh, uh, get a jump start on it. So you can start reading on it and it'll get you excited and will help you understand how fantastic you are. You know, and how you have the ability to just get what you want and to live your dream. So let's work it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Legacy of Literacy Spring. No, we already, we already did that one. No. This one. Rev. Reverend. Reverend David's class will begin on Thursday, April 11th at 6 p.m. The class will be reading, working with the law, truth, principles for successful living. The book will be available for purchase in the bookstore for the class. The class will meet here at DUT and will be ongoing until the completion of the book. The power for month of April is love. The corresponding color is pink. Wear pink suits, dresses, ties, <laughs> shirts, <laughs> shoes, hairpins, and jewelry. <laughs> Show your love and power by dressing in the color pink. This completes our announcements. Thank you very much. Come on, let's give them another hand. Yeah. We will continue to be giving our youth an opportunity to demonstrate and come forward and to step into leadership. It's the only way we keep growing. Also, what was mentioned that I want to share, another member of our spiritual community, Sandra Stewart, made her transition, and we will be having her service here next week as well. So we have two individuals whose family just send your love and your thoughts to them. I like to also say, if you know someone who has not been coming for a while, reach out to them, give them a call. This is our spiritual community. I can't reach everyone, but together we can reach everyone. Yes. And that's one of the attitudes we have to take in because you may know of someone and I may know of someone, but together we can touch all bases. Amen? Amen. Now, please join with us and Unity Worldwide Ministries everywhere as we pray and believe the following prayer. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. So we let go of any fears of anxiety and we affirm that all are safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We express divine life in all we think say and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. And as we bring our service to a close, I would like to take a moment to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone that has continued to support us with your tithes and offerings. We truly, truly cannot do what we do here without you. Our goal is to go forth and spread the love, light, and teachings of Jesus the Christ. So please remember to invite your friends and family to join our 10 a.m. Sunday service or watch the playback at 12 noon. And before we go further, the Children's Church did a play today downstairs. Yeah. Let's give them a hand. And all those involved, would you please stand? Would you please stand if you were involved in the play? 
All right. So we know that they did a wonderful play, a wonderful job, and we appreciate our youth. And that was great. We have to keep doing that, having an opportunity to bring them forward. Now let us stand as we sing our prayer of protection and our peace song. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. Before we leave, there are individuals who have Easter lilies and some individuals have purchased them for you. There's a list like this. Well, please see if your name is on it and you can pick up a Easter lily. Amen. Amen. You're assisting. <laughs> <laughs>